Patel. I'm uh, 35. I w um, have been working in uh, web development and website management for several years. That's what I do professionally. Um, I do have a, a computer science degree and um, do have some background in uh, programming, uh, developing web applications. But I hadn't really done that for several years. Um, I kind of moved into the management side of things, uh, the business side of, of my companies. And so um, when Kodu came out and I heard about it um, through the Xbox Live, uh, then Community Games channel, now it's called the Indie Games channel, um, I picked it up to see what it could do. And I thought, you know, it might be fun to program again and, and uh, create some uh, simple games. I had no idea what it would be capable of. but. Um, that's kind of what happens. I picked it up shortly after it was released uh, through the, the uh, live channel, mm -hmm. and I just got hooked. It was uh, so engrossing that I didn't put another disc in my 360 for three months. Oh, wow. I didn't actually play a game for three months. All I did was when I got on, uh, I would code you. And I pretty much do that every day because that's my entertainment is gaming. And for me, this was. Uh, you know, so much more engaging than doing that. that I, I just got sucked in and, and started creating games right there the first day. I think the most exciting thing for me um, was that it took away what I felt like were a lot of the mundane aspects of programming. Um, you know, having done Java and C and things like that years before, um, you know, you, you get used to all of the things that you have to do just to get a basic program to run <laughs> and all of the understanding that you have to have of how the system works and its limitations. And and firing up Kodu, basically, Kodu says, we're going to take care of all that for you. Um, all you need to do is be creative. And within the parameters that are defined by what the program can and can't do, you know, go wild, make whatever you want, um, you know, be as creative as you can be. And I found that very liberating. And it really inspired me to start getting creative again and think about games as something that I could create instead of just something I could play. Mm. Uh, you know, I, I think that there are a few things that Kodu um, doesn't handle particularly well. If you're thinking about game genres, uh, fighting games, not so much. You know, you don't have any limbs to work with. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, that was always something I saw, and I said, well, you know, it would be great, but how good could it be? And I, I've seen people try to make fighting games, and they've made some that they were kind of entertaining, but it's not quite the same. Um, I, you can do, uh, you know, some role-playing with it, but again, uh, you're limited by the, the variable setup that you have in Kodu. The fact that all your variables are basically integers, there's no strings, there's no... The, you know, arrays, there's no way to store all that inventory very effectively. I mean, there are ways around all of these things. Uh, you can get very clever with it, which is the great thing, I think, about the system, is that while it, it has lots of limitations, the way to approach it really is to say, you know, the, the limitation doesn't stop me from doing it. The limitation forces me to be really creative and figure out a way to make it workable. And if it truly isn't workable within the framework of Kodu, then you just have to recognize that and say, you know, that that isn't the kind of game I can make here. But, uh, you know, it hasn't stopped people from trying almost anything. Yeah. And, uh, you know, there's some great stuff out there. As far as the rest of the community, a lot of the people seem to be, that, that really seem to be into it are on this uh, Kodu X board that I'm, I'm sure you've seen now. And uh, that's how most people have been communicating about what they're doing, uh, helping each other out with coding issues and, and making suggestions to the dev team. They check in there sometimes. So really that's been the kind of the centerpiece of the community as far as communication goes. But if they get the servers back online, you know, then I think we'd see people really jump back into it and start making games and, and publishing them. Absolutely. I, I think that is um, critical, especially uh, when you're learning, uh, learning a new language essentially is what you're doing. Um, to get in and, and to look at the game, see what's happening, and then you know think about it, open it up, open up the code because it's all there, and, and figure it out. And then you know one of the great things Kodu lets you do too is start playing with other people's games. You could go in and start making changes and see, well, what if I made this guy a little bit faster? You know, what if I change this rule? Uh, how, how does that change the gameplay? And then you can use all of those concepts. Import it into your own. 
Um, a lot of the games that I uh, ended up creating, you know, some of the concepts I saw in somebody else's game. And mm. I said, that's a great idea, but I would use it to do this. And I'll bring it over, maybe modify it a little bit, and then implement it in my own game. I've done a variety of things on Kodu. Uh, a couple of shooters. Um, I did some, uh, like a game I categorized as a puzzle game, which was mm. basically a Kodu version of Clue. Oh, yeah. Or Cluedo, as it's called. I don't know what it's called in Australia. But, um, you know, with the whodunit mystery, uh, where you are a single player, you play by yourself, trying to figure out, you know, who committed the crime, what room, what weapon, and in order for there to be some uh, tension, every once in a while all the lights go out, there's a thunderstorm, and the killer stalks you through the house. So, because you can't do multiplayer with it really very well, so I basically said, well, we'll do single player, but now there has to be a way for you to lose. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, I did that. One is a game that um, was sort of based on uh, a stealth type genre yeah. where I had you breaking into a museum. So mm -hmm. you had to avoid searchlights that went around the room. There, were la there was a laser trap grid in one of the, the rooms. Um, there was a maze with guards who had flashlights. You know, and uh, you just sort of brought together all the, the staples of that genre and see, okay, how would I make those work in code? And it ended up being a lot of fun. Um, I made a game based on being a gladiator in a coliseum where you had a big spitting blade that you uh, spun around and, and hacked apart your uh, opponents. Um, I did a version of uh, Haunted House, the Atari game from you know, 1983 or whatever, to see if I could make that run in Kodu. Um, I don't know if you guys uh, play a game called Ultimate Frisbee over there. It's a little bit like American football, but with a Frisbee. I made Kodu Ultimate Frisbee. <laughs> You know, where you use the little saucer guy and you can throw the saucer around between the okay. codings. So, all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Oh, and of course, a, a soccer game. Yeah. Uh, one of the most challenging projects was the soccer game. Because I am a huge soccer fan and I've been playing, you know, FIFA and Winning Eleven for years and years and years. Now, I, I buy those every year, but, you know, I always wanted to make one. So, I got into Kodu and um, trying to figure out how to make the AI run was really challenging. Mm. But uh, it was a very fulfilling project, too, because I got it to work. I got the players to play positions and to be aware of where the ball was. And uh, if it kind of comes into their zone, they, they go after it. You know, if you have the ball, they move into their offensive positions and stuff. So, you know, that, those are the challenges. I think that's where you, you come up against the limitations of Kodu, and you really have to kind of push yourself and say, this is all i got to work with, but I'm going to make it work. And, and you can find a way to do it a lot of the time. Well, I think we've talked about the number one thing, which is to get your hands on as many examples as you can and see how other people solve the problems that are out there. Um, you know, there's no reason to reinvent the wheel if you don't have to, unless you think you can make a better wheel. That may be the case, or it may not. You may not need to. Uh, I, to me, that's number one. Um, apart from that, uh, I spent a lot of time planning and brainstorming before I even picked up my controller. Mm -hmm. And a lot of my games were written out in uh, Notepad on my PC. Um, before I did anything on the Xbox, I would try to come think about, you know, what are the goals of the game? What do I want the player to be doing and thinking about when they're playing? Uh, how am I going to make the controls work in a way that makes the game really playable? Mm. Um, you know, how am I going to use the, the limited variables that I have to represent the data that I need? Um, and which characters, Kodu characters, am I going to use to represent certain things? And I would plan all that out, you know, before I, I got on the Xbox. And I would even start writing out the code. Once you get comfortable with it, you know, there's a limited number of commands mm. that are available. And so you can just start saying, okay, on... My, my primary code, page one, this is what it's going to say. You know, page two, this is what it's going to say. And this is how I get from page one to page two. And I found that looking at it on, you know, written out on a piece of, uh, well, not a piece of paper, but on a notepad, really helped me see where the connections were between my objects. And that was good from learning an you know, object-oriented programming perspective. I, I have to think about how one object interacts with the other, because everything in code is encapsulated in an object. And... Uh, that really helped visualize that. Now, when you sit down to design it, you know, every plan is wonderful until it's tested in battle, right? Yeah. Then you figure out what Kodu will and won't do, 
and you can modify it, but at least you have something to start with, and you don't just sit down with a blank canvas and go, uh, what am I going to make today? You know, because that really is when you have one of those unproductive days. 